You know, there are, there are two things that we would like to learn for the next couple of weeks. Okay? Um, if you remember, we had a, a theme for the month of April which is called Overcome. We would like to overcome the obstacles of life. You know, we do understand that even though we are here on planet Earth, there are so many obstacles. And the first thing, the first obstacle that we discuss is dealing with depression. Now we would like to deal with depression, although we did not do it clinically, but we do it spiritually. And then the following Sunday, we discuss most of the time when you are depressed, you would like to give up. You know? I uh, it's 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 a bad news that there are a couple of young people who just committed against suicide for the last couple of weeks. And actually one is a nephew of a pastor in Philadelphia, who is also a Filipino. And uh, they just found his body floating by uh, Hudson River a couple of weeks ago. So, uh, and then the following Sunday, we discuss, we discuss overcoming our, our doubts. So the first Sunday of April, we discuss about depression. And then we learn about when you like to give up. And then when you start to doubt about your faith, when you start to doubt about God, we, we dealt with it. And last Sunday, we talked about what? What was the topic last Sunday? Failing forward. Failing forward. forward. Meaning to say, it doesn't matter when we fail. The book of Proverbs tells us, a righteous man falls many times, but he stands up again. You know? Failing forward is realizing that we need someone, we need God, in order for us to move forward. Now, for the month of May, we're going to transition. We're still connected with overcoming, you know, but we would like to transition smoothly to a more deeper study of overcoming things in life. Right? As you can see behind us, our theme for the next seven weeks, seven weeks is spiritual treasure. Spiritual treasure. You know, brothers and sisters in the Lord, let us understand that there are two kinds of treasure that the Lord Jesus Christ has taught us in the scripture. One is what we call the material treasure or the physical treasure and the other one is the spiritual treasure. Now, majority of the people looks on the what? On the material treasure. Now, is there something behind why people would look onto the material treasure, but why people would focus more on the material treasure rather than spiritual treasure? You know, there is nothing wrong with having something in life, right? Then there is nothing wrong with having wealth. I, I'm, not, I'm not against wealth, wealthy people. But if you're going to, to look and search, you'll find out the majority of the people who are living on planet Earth are focused more on getting material treasure rather than spiritual treasure. Now the Bible tells us that material wealth, material treasure, according to the Lord Jesus Christ, can be rotten. It can be stolen. We can lose it anytime. It doesn't last eternity in eternity compared to spiritual treasure. The Bible tells us that spiritual treasure changes everything in us. Although we are not wealthy, but we are more than comforted and we are more than contented than other wealthy people. It doesn't mean that we don't have money, we're not happy. Now, as I do some research, I found out and discovered that the reason why people would like to focus more on material wealth that they, you know, in the context of America, people work here more than 12 hours. Majority of them work more than 12 hours a day. And there was a research that was done and they said, why do people work more than 12 hours a day? An average worker work more than 12 hours a day. Wealthy people work more than 12 hours a day. Why? There was an answer that was given 
by this person and he said, the reason why people would give and give more time for material wealth is because they are seeking for freedom. The freedom from anxiety, freedom from problems, freedom from financial difficulty, freedom to live a life that they want, freedom to choose what they want, freedom to buy what they want. They, they are in search of freedom. And the first spiritual treasure that we're going to talk about tonight is what we call freedom. What is freedom for? You know, as I was saying, the majority of the people are focused on material treasures. They want to have this, they want to do this because they are searching, they are looking for something that will liberate their lives in bondage of something. You know, I don't know how many of us in this place right now who is in bondage of financial difficulty or, or in bondage of relational, relational conflict or in bondage of so many things, you know. And when we are in bondage, it means there is no freedom. Right? So first, let's talk about freedom. What is the definition of freedom? Anybody can define freedom for me, please? How did you? Basically, that's that's what that's what the uh, definition was given. A state, I don't know if it's East Coast or West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> A state in which somebody or someone is able to act and live as he or she chooses without being subject to any undue restraints or restrictions. That is freedom. Do we have that? Anybody have to ask this? I'll just pose a challenge. Anybody, anybody has lived as he chooses without being subject to undue restraints and restrictions. Anybody is enjoying this? Anybody? Yes. Who? Now, now listen. Well, I am a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I am free. Amen? Amen. I believe that. I was free from the bondage of sin, but I am not free from the bondage of emotional distress. And there is still restrictions, and there is still respect. Am I experiencing freedom? I would say half and half. It's just like a, a something for coffee. <coughs> Half three, half and half. Another definition, definition is released from captivity or slavery. How many are slaves? <laughs> I, I heard this that a husband is a lover at night and a slave in the morning. <laughs> because they do the laundry, they do the dishwashing, they do the dining. Oh, there you go. There's a reaction. There you go. There is a restraint. <laughs> so there's no freedom. Okay? Another definition is this. Absence of something what? Unpleasant. Absence of something unpleasant. Meaning to say, there is freedom if there is no problem. So there is a problem, there is no freedom. For those who thought Marxist, Leninist, and logical thoughts, freedom is the absence of oppression, manipulation, and tyrants. But this is the doctrine of Marxist, Leninist, and logical thoughts. Meaning to say, there will only be freedom if there is no people who is being oppressed. How do you define oppression? And then the rule of someone taking advantage of someone by implementing pain and suffering to their lives for their own benefit. That is oppression. Okay? Now, anybody who is oppressed here? <laughs> Manipulation. Anybody who is manipulated? How about tyrants? But I'm bringing them to the you know, there's a sense of freedom. Now, it's impossible to live in freedom 
since there is no one who can really live without restrictions, captivity, and slavery. Let me make a point, okay? Before I go deep into this study, let me make a point. Like, for example, you get married. How many of you are married? Raise your right hand. Those, those who are married. Okay. Now, I'm going to pose, I'm going to throw questions, and I want you to just say, mm hmm. Okay? If this happens to you, just say, mm hmm. Okay? Now, as I have said here, it is impossible to live in freedom since there is no one who can really live without restrictions. Now, if you are married, if you experience restrictions in your life, can you say, mm hmm? Relationship that is glorifying to the Lord, 
You know, we've been rebellious, we've been living a riotous life before, we've done, we've done so many things in life that even somehow, now that we're born again believers, it still haunts us. Sometimes the people that looks at, look at us doesn't believe that we are really a changed person. Sometimes people that sees us does not believe that we are a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now our past before it still haunts us. Now in our past where we're talking about guilt here. When we are having guilt in life, we're not going to enjoy the fullness of God's freedom in our lives. When we're living in the past, that is what, that is what Apostle Paul is telling us in Philippians chapter 3 verse 13. He said, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Now, enjoying freedom, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, is actually liberating ourselves from the life past. For the Lord, it is not important to dwell in the past. We learn from it, but we don't stay in it, but we look forward on the things that are now and the future. God is more focused on telling us how are you living your life now and how are you going to live your life soon. That is the reason why Apostle Paul is telling us you have to forget the past so that you may be able to live in the present and move forward. So nobody enjoys freedom unless that person is suffering from the past. Number two, that I am going to pain. I think now, many of us have been hurt. Many of us have been hurt through relationships. Many of us have been hurt by words. Many of us have been hurt by circumstances. Many of us have been hurt. But I want you to understand that that pain caused by sin. Without the sin, there is no pain. That is Ezekiel is telling us in 1957. I will pour my fear and sin, the son of Egypt, I will cut the multitude of law, and send a fire in Egypt. Sin shall have great pain. So sin is the one that brings great pain. No shall be split over, and no shall be in distress daily. Sin brings us in that state of distress. And through that distress, there will always be pain. I don't know how many of us are suffering through pain right now. I don't know how we're we'll passing through that pain. Whether it's physical pain, or spiritual pain, or psychological pain. You know, I, I don't know anybody who's suffering from that right now. But if we do, always remember this. We cannot enjoy the fullness of God's freedom, the freedom that was given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ, if we live by the past and we continue to live under the pain. Because when we live under the pain, we live under bitterness. And when we live in bitterness, our perspective is changed, our lives is changed, our decisions is changed, everything is different in us. Even if we're followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no good things that comes out. If we live in the past, if we live in pain, there is nothing that is good. I was, I was asking the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to share to my brothers and sisters in the Lord? In order for us to understand what is freedom is all about. What is freedom is all about. Many times I, I say this for the last couple of weeks, that while we are here, while we are here, we will encounter so many problems. Amen? Where we're going to encounter many problems, we're going to encounter many trials, we're going to encounter many challenges in life. But can I live in freedom? Freedom from anxiety, freedom from anxiousness, freedom from worry like PSKG. The worry free. Can you enroll in that? The worry free. But when you call them, you worry. <laughs> it happened to us, you know, our heat. Went down. Well, our education went down. I called them. I have a worry free. Oh, yeah, you have a worry free. Can you come? Can you fix our air conditioning? Okay, we'll go and come. And then when they come, all oh, this needs to be replaced. Worry free. This needs to be replaced. We'll replace it. But we don't cover that. We only cover the inspection. So how much is this? Well, 6500 That's the time you're worried. <laughs> That's the time you're Oh, golly. 
I promise myself that every message that I'm going to deliver, I will try to memorize it as I can. Like a big step away and, and cut some time. You know, probably cut about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, because when you're extemporaneous, sometimes there's a lot of additions. Okay? So far now? Find it already? Psalm 26, let's, let's read together. Okay? I'm reading from the NLT. What is NLT? New Living Translation. Now, Pastor, what is the difference? None. It's just the English words, the prosecution. But it's not accurate. Because you want to be accurate? Open your, your, your Hebrew Bible, please, to the book of Psalm, because it was written in Hebrew. So none of us will understand that. Okay? So don't 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 reason out of all this. It's, no, it's, it's, it's the same thing, okay? And uh, then later on I'm going to use NIV, I'm going to use ESV, I'm going to use King James, New King James, I'm going to use Big Law. Are you familiar with Big Law? You're not familiar with Big Law? I belong to the one. It's English Tagalog. Okay? I'm also using Panglo. You know what's a Panglo? Pangbelato. And I'm also using, I'm going to using Panglish. You want to say Panglish? Pampanan English. Okay, so Rotis, you know what's a Rotis translation? It is actually a Rotis translation, Igoro and English. So anybody who understands Igoro here, I'm going to read your language later. Okay, let's, let's read it all together, okay? God is our refuge and strength. Always ready to help in times of troubles, so we will not fear when earthquakes comes, but come and mountains tremble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and fall. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in the city, he cannot be destroyed. For the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos, the kingdoms tremble. God voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Interview. What's an interview? Mrs. Yeah. what is an interview? What was an interview? What's an interview? The interview is in between the faith stances. It's the instrumentals. He breaks the bomb, the ball, and the snap, and the snap of the spear. He breaks the shields with fire. Most of you are familiar with verse 10. Right? Most of you are familiar with verse 10. What is verse 10? Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of Heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Now, let me share to you what the Lord has blessed me in order for us to enjoy the fullness of freedom in our spiritual lives. You know, I'm not talking about physical pleasure. I'm not talking about the material pleasure. I am more focused on the spiritual pleasure that we can get. So we're going to draw out principles from the text. I'm not going to go out from the text. I'm not going to use any reference. I will just use the same text to draw out principles coming from the Lord. So we would be able to know what is the spiritual pleasure we're getting from this in order for us to enjoy the fullness of freedom. Now again, we're focused on the spiritual pleasure, not on the material pleasure. Material pleasure is not important for the believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it's not that it is bad, but the Bible always encourages us to more focus more on what? The heavenly treasure, which is the spiritual life. Okay? So we, we live in duality, brothers and sisters in the Lord. While we are living in the flesh, we live in the spirit. But the Bible tells us, as believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must be driven more in the spiritual life rather than the physical life. Now when we enrich our spiritual lives, listen to this, there will always be freedom. How? Number one, we're going to check the problems. 
the problems or distress. Now, how many problems have we seen in the text? There's a lot, right? Then, for example, troubles. How many of us does not have any troubles? How many of us are not in trouble with our job? How many of us does not have trouble with relationship in the work? How many of us are not in trouble with our loved ones? How many of us are not in trouble with our, with, with our family, with our, with our friends, or, or with our job, with our finances, for example, with, with credit cards, with debts, you know, with, with obligations to pay? How many of us are not experiencing that? How many of us have not have trouble that is the first trouble in your life? So when we talk about problems, when we talk about distress, you know, what is the connection with, with Psalm 46 passage? Let me bring it out everything, okay? Troubles, earthquakes, mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and fall. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. The nations are in chaos and the kingdoms crumble. The earth melts, wars melts throughout the earth. If you're going to check this out, this is more difficult problems compared to the problems we're encountering right now. Because we're talking about the last days. We're talking about the last days here. Now how many of you believe that we are in the last days? That we are living in the number of days because the Lord Jesus Christ will soon come back. How many of us believe? When did we enter the last days? Did, did you study the prophecy I gave you? The, the parallel of the, the prophecy. I, I think Gigi, a complete compilation of the prophecy of the Old Testament for the fulfillment of the New Testament and the prophecies that is to come. Every prophecy that I know is written in the scripture, I, I give it to Gigi. But I do believe that we are living in the last days. You know why? One of the most difficult prophecies to happen is the establishment of the nation of Israel in one day. Remember, they were scattered all over the place. When they were in bondage, you know, they were defeated by their conquerors. They were scattered all over the places. They were living in different countries. There was no nation of Israel for the longest time that you remember. There is no Israel in the map. They lost their identity. And one of the prophecies is this. In the last days, when Israel is proclaimed in one day, by the, the, by the, when, the, when the government, when the United Nations came in, there was no United Nations at the time, okay? But they said, although they will convene in one day, they're going to proclaim Israel as a nation again, and they will come out from different places and will go home to their motherland. And it happened in 1948. Meaning to say, in 1948, we already entered the last days. The pastor, when is the Lord Jesus Christ coming? You know, there is a lot of signs. In Matthew 20, for God gave us a sign when the Lord is coming. Remember, they were talking. The, the apostles were saying, you know, oh, look at all the stones that Jesus Christ said. You know, when the time comes, all the stones that you see, all the rocks that you see, probably all the buildings, everything will be destroyed, everything will be broken. So, Lord, when is this going to be happening? Always remember this, all the churches before, the Corinth, the, the Ephesus, every, every, every church in the New Testament was actually excited for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, that stopped the church from winning souls. Because they were living in expectancy for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But nobody knows when the Lord Jesus Christ is coming. There is only signs. You know, and the signs is what? Wars, rumors of wars, famines. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, if you're going to look at this, this is what we call the detail of Matthew 24, one by one. Troubles. Everyone has a trouble today. Nobody is not in trouble today. Everyone of us is living in troubles. Next, earthquakes. How many earthquakes is happening? Still remember I preached about earthquakes. In the Philippines alone, there is more than 600 earthquakes every single day recorded. If you go to the to the uh, U.S. Geographical Census, if you go to the internet, you'll find out that in the world more than a thousand earthquakes every single day, big and small that is happening. You go there, you'll find out the data, and then mountains crumble to the sea, 
You know, you know what's the meaning of this? That's life. Boundaries are being flattened, and the oceans roar and foam, tidal wave, you know? And then the nations are in chaos. What is the, what is the meaning of the nation are in chaos? War? Is it only war? Nation against nation? Protest and everything? Not only that, the financial collapse of every, part of every, every country. I still remember about 30 years ago when you come here in America, this is the land that flows with milk and honey. This is the land of the promise where everything is what? Everything is possible if you work hard. But it's not the same today. It's not the same today. That is the reason why we're collapsing. That is the reason why our economy is bad. That is the reason why everyone is suffering from financial loss. Everyone is, is, is suffering from, from difficulties in life. You know why? Because nation, every nation in this world is chaotic right now. There is no control. Everywhere you go, there is problems. Everywhere you go, there is trouble. So the Lord is discussing here in the, in the book of Psalm, you know, he's not only dealing with the problems of everyday life, but he's actually telling us there are bigger picture in this world. That the world, that the people in this world are having difficulty. We're just going to think about it. You know, sometimes we're, we're having problems with the shoe that we're going to wear. Yeah, I didn't have a shoe to wear today. Until I saw that Facebook, you know, Facebook post. No? I have a problem on how to turn on my microwave. But he doesn't have a microwave because he lives in Africa. I have a problem tying my shoelace where he's wearing the two liter, two, two liter soda, empty bottle soda. They put on that. I, I, I have difficulty, you know, I don't have a Ralph Lauren, but the child is naked. You know the, the, the commercial with the third world country? I hope you, you saw that in Facebook. And that video helps us in times of troubles. Let it be. God will protect us. You know, I was, I, I just want to show you a very simple protection coming from the world. Uh, I don't know how to say this, but about last Thursday, uh, Thursday, or Wednesday, last, uh, Thursday, last Thursday, I was in Staten Island. With my wife, because my wife has a huh? Wednesday. My wife has an MRI and now we have a regular check. So and I was exhausted because I was you know I was fixing a lot of things in the home. But fixing, studying, fixing, studying, you know, I alter me. You know, of course everything is helping me as well. Um, because I the first homework that I have is to paint so to be Paul's room, PJ's room. If you went to the house, remember our, our second bedroom, we made a division. If you have, how many of you have went up to the house? There's a division. We knocked that out, so it's just one room. Then I painted it blue. You know, uh, we, we, so it's a little bit exhausting. And then after that, I accepted another job offering from my wife. This is the trouble. So when you accept something from your wife, it's a trouble, right? Now, now I learned why they pay contractors so high. Because it's physically, exhaust, physically exhausting. It's, it's physically exhausting, especially for younger men like me. <laughs> <laughs> so, we need to fix the bathroom. So I painted the bathroom. After I painted the bathroom, my wife looked at it and, oh, there's a lot of holes in the ground already. So, can we take off the ground? Uh huh. That is exhausting. Take off the ground. So, when you take off the ground, what do you do? Reground it, right? I thought putting a ground is just like, that's it. You know, you're done. Never realize when I go to YouTube University, they're thinking, how do you put it down? This is how you have movement, right? It's like fancy. So, I, I did the first portion, but I, what I did is wrong. I did the first portion and allowed it to drop. So it's difficult to sand the haste. You know, with the haste scrubber, the, the back of the other coat, the haste scrubber, started to hurt my shoulder. Remember, I have a frozen shoulder. So 
So welcome to YouTube University and seek another advice. <laughs> okay, and go to the forum. Oh, okay. So you apply a certain portion, and then you want a sponge, and then you wipe it. Ganun pala yun? Oh, okay. So it's easier to, to scrub the eggs otherwise, but it's soft. You know? Oh, okay. Now, the problem is the bottom part. Remember, I have difficulty bending because of my 32 waist. So every time I would put the grounding under and I would stand up, I kept on shouting, Ah! And then my wife is going to go out of the room and says, Are you calling me? <laughs> Are you talking to me? <laughs> So finally, I'm done yesterday. When I was waiting for, 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 for the ground to dry up, studying, go up again, I was about to apply the sealer. So then I, I read the instru again, instructions. <laughs> my, my wife said, read the instructions first. No, 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 let's put the sealer now. Read the instruction. Wait till the ground dries in 24 hours. <laughs> okay, put down the sealer. <laughs> Went to bed. This morning I did the ceiling. But what does it mean? When we were in Staten Island, I was so exhausted. I was, when she was under MRI, I tried to take help us in times of trouble. Let it be. God will protect us. You know, I was, I, I just want to show you a very simple protection coming from the Lord. Uh, I don't know how to say this, but about last Thursday, Thursday or Wednesday? Last, huh? Thursday. Last Thursday, I was in Staten Island with my wife, which my wife has a huh? Wednesday. My wife has an MRI and mammogram. The regular check. So I was exhausted because I was, you know, I was fixing a lot of things in the home. Like fixing, studying, fixing, studying. You know, I alternate. You know, of course everything is helping me as well. Uh, because I, the first homework that I had is to paint soon to be Paul's room, PJ's room. If you went to the house, remember our, our second bedroom, we made a division. If you have, how many of you have went up to the house? There's a division. We knocked that out, so it's just one room. Then I painted it blue. You know, uh, we, we, so it's a little exhausting. And then after that, I accepted another job offering from my wife. This is the trouble. So when you accept something from your wife, it's a trouble, right? So, now, now I learned why they pay contractors so high. Because it's physically, exhaust, physically exhausting. It's, it's physically exhausting, especially for younger men like me. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to fix the bathroom. So I painted the bathroom. After I painted the bathroom, my wife looked at it and Oh, there's a lot of holes in the ground already. So, can we take off the ground? Uh huh. That is exhausting. Take off the ground. So, when you take off the ground, what do you do? Reground. And then the baby. So I was snapping. Then, when I saw the windshield, it has about four inches crack. So, I went down, I checked. Nothing. No pebbles, no nothing. And I was wondering, Lord, what hit me? No, I, I raised you because, you know, it's only the reason that was broken. Why did that is a bullet? You know, a straight bullet. The, the, there's no more pastor. There's no more husband. There's no more father. But what if the witch had collapsed on me? So, and I praise the Lord, Lord, you know, thank you for your protection. You know, thank you for your blessing. In fact, I posted it on Facebook, Gary Talagari Lord of Grace. You saw that. I'm meaning to say, I'm going to have a new windshield tomorrow. And thank you for, for God's provision. Let's just praise the Lord for protection. How many of you were protected by the Lord in many ways? Right? God will always protect. That is number 40. You know, I, 
I love the connection of fortress and refuge. Do you know the connection of a refuge and a fortress? Now, when you seek a place of refuge, there is safety, right? When you are there being saved in that place, God becomes a fortress, meaning to say, He put a fence around you to secure you and to strengthen you and to protect you. It's a fortress. Just imagine it's not only our place of safety, it's not only our strength, but he is also our fortress. Just look at the promises of God here. There are so many promises, right? The last thing, by the way, the Lord is here, I, I just paraphrase it, but if you're going to look again Psalm 26, there are twice, twice it was stated that the Lord is here, ever present. God is always there. Right? God is always there, the Lord is ever present. Now, if you're going to go back to the problems, there are eight problems. I believe so, because that's A to G, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, 7. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, 7. You should have a few of these. G, 7, right? 7. How many promises? 6, 7, because the last one is twice was mentioned. What is the meaning of that? They do not mean to say for every problem, but there is a, a promise. And if you notice, when God gives us the problem, there is a blessing. There is a promise. So if there is 365 days of problem, there are more than promises in the Bible. More than 365 every single day. Can you follow? There is a problem, there is a promise. Can we enjoy the problem? Yes, why? Because there is a problem. Now, how are we going to enjoy the fullness of freedom through this, through these promises? The direction. We're, we're, go, we're going to principles in Psalm 46, remember? We saw there will always be problems. There will always be challenges. Bigger than we thought. Bigger than we thought. But although there are problems and there are trials, there are promises. But in order for us to enjoy the promises, there are two things that we need to do. Only two things. How many problems? Seven. How many promises? Seven. What is our participation? Two. Is that fair? Is that fair? In the sight of the Lord? Yes. Because we're not God. We're followers of God. He doesn't want my life to be complicated. There's only two things that we need to do. What's number one? Be still. How do you define be still? I, that's one of my favorite songs by Lionel Richie. Right? How many of you know that song? Still. By Lionel Richie. You know that song? It's in the 80s, right? When that, when that song is played, you always dance sweet with no lights. Lady, 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 Be still. Don't move. Don't move. What is he trying to tell us? What is the Lord trying to say to us? What is he trying to accomplish in our lives? When there is a problem, don't make your own move. Be still. Why do we have to be still? The next instruction is this. Know that I am God. God is our friend. God is our refuge. God is our strength. God is our fortress. He is the ever present. But aside from all those things, God wants us to know Him as God. As God. This is how I put it. 
The only way we can be still is when we know God. God wants us to know Him as God in order to enjoy all these promises against the things that enslave us and we'll be able to enjoy the fullness of freedom. Freedom from anxiety, freedom from distress, freedom from discouragement, freedom from depression, freedom from fear, freedom from anything that will arise and challenge our lives. We can be still because we know God. How many of us know God? Amen. For principle, how to know God? Right? The Bible tells us, be still and know I am God. How to know God? Remember, I'm going to answer the last question. How am I going to know God? Again, basic. I'm just going to go to the basics, okay? Spend time in His Word. Spend time in His Word. Know who God is in my life. His natural attributes and His moral attributes. What is natural attributes and what is moral attributes? How many of you know the, the natural attributes of God? Natural attributes of God? Matak Nabi. Tom Ups to the Pen. Oh, natural attributes. God is? Omnipresent. Omniscient. Omnipotent. In Nehemiah's word, God is all powerful. God is all knowing. God is ever present. Right? If we know God, God is all powerful, He can do anything that we ask Him, but not to the point He's going to contradict His moral attributes. When we say God is holy, God will never answer our prayer if that will contradict the moral attributes of God as a holy God. Okay? God is omniscient, He knows everything. Isn't it wonderful to just trust the Lord with all your ways? That's what the Bible tells us, remember? Trust the Lord in all thy ways and lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will what? Direct your path. In James chapter 1, the Bible tells us we will suffer from different kinds of temptations. That was the case of problem. If we lack ask, if we lack in black wisdom, our sins shall be given abundantly. We need to say, when we have problems, when we are trying, when there is difficulty, we ask God for guidance. Amen? God is the first solution to the problem, not the last. And God wants us to know Him as God. Now the good thing about God is this. One of the moral attributes of God that I love so much is God is what? Immutable. Do you know the definition of God is immutable? Now someone said, someone said this morning, oh, you cannot hold him to start to speak. Mutable, mutable. <laughs> immutable meaning to say, God does not change. God does not change. His will never change. It's the same. Over and over and over and over again. In time past, in time present, in time to come, God's will never change. But what is this happening? That is your will, that has will. God's will never change. It never changes. So if God said He is the refuge, He'll never change. He will always be the refuge. If God says He is the strength, He will always be the strength. If God says He is the fortress, He'll always be the fortress. If God says He is the provider, He will always be the provider. God is everything. He's always everything. Do we know God that way? Let us know God as God. Okay? He's our friend. There's no, there's no problem with that. He's our co creator he's, he's this and he's that. That's fine with me. There's no problem with that. But we have to know God for who he is. The Bible tells us, he always say, I am that I am. He doesn't to prove anything, in fact. So the proof of prayer that is in our part, in, all, in our part, to know him, not for him to know us, because he knows us already, in and out. In and out. Remember, the Bible tells us, He is the one who assembled us in our mother's womb. He is the one. He knows everything, even the hill that falls down. I remember. Kaya mga ubos, ano ninyo si Lord? Lord, ilan ba ang tao? Nalahulog. Pagdating nyo doon. Pagdating nyo na. 
Wait a minute. No, how to know God? Spend time in His Word. Spend time in His Word. Right? So if you don't have a small group, you're missing a lot. If you're not attending, equipping, if you're not attending Bible study, you're missing a lot. There, there, there is no difference between the old belief and the old tradition rather than the new belief and the new, and the new teachings. There's a big difference between Simba and Samba. Okay? Simba, you just listen and then you go of Samba, you go, you listen to the instruction, and then you transform it to live a life worthy to be called the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When we spend time with the world, we spend time with God. Do you, do you know how Moses spent time with the world? In the wilderness. Right? In the wilderness. Do you know how Elijah spent time with the world? At the river. Do you know how Paul met the world? Damascus. Do you know how John gave his revelation? In the island of Patmos. Do you know where Abraham condoled with the Lord or, or, or communed with the Lord? In the desert. What does it mean? Days. How about the Lord Jesus Christ? Every time he talked to the Father, where is he? Up there in the mountains. So, mundo. Asa mundo ka paginoon? He is always go up in order to commune with the Father. Meaning to say, we need to really spend time with God. And believe me, God is not going to talk to us audibly today. He's not going to show off to prove He is alive. He's not going to let you hear. Just like, you know, just like the movie that we watched before. Take off your shoes. Why, Lord? You're standing on holy ground. Probably if we hear a voice like that, we'll run. Right? Oh no! Bobby! I hear the voice! Oh no! Christina, don't do that to me, I'm afraid. No, no, no. Christina. We don't, we don't hear that anymore. God speaks to us through, her, through, through it. Through the Bible. Through the scripture. You want to know God? Spend time with the Word. Not only that, learn from the Word. Not just reading through it, but rather listening to what God wants to tell you. Reading in between the line and asking God, what does He wants to teach me that I can apply in my life? That I have to ask God. I need to read in between the line and ask God, God, what do you want to teach me today? What do you want me to be transformed? How are you going to build my character today? How are you going to add my character today? Lord, I'm passing through this. Can you please lead me to an answer? And I learned to ask him in between the lines. Remember, we are not only acquiring instruction from the Word. What do we need is transformation, not only information. The Word of God is not a book of information only, but it is a book of transformation. So when we spend time with the Word, we can know God more in our lives. Amen? If we read and learn from the Word, we are being transformed from glory to glory. Day to day, we become stronger in the Lord. If you want, if we want to experience the fullness and the joy of God's freedom, we have to be still and know that He is God. And all the promises in the Scripture will become alive because we know He is God. And I praise the Lord for that. One can only enjoy the promises of God if he know God in his life. Let us see, experience the love of God by learning from those people in the Bible that experience the love and the power of God in their language. Want to enjoy the fullness of God's freedom? 
learn from the love. That is love. Amen? You know, there are so many people in the Old Testament and the New Testament who have experienced the love of God. Learn from it. We can learn by reading, we can learn by watching, we can learn by meditating, we can also learn by watching. That's the thing to happen to me. Pastor, have I, or how am I, how am I not experiencing the love of God? That's not true. Because the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, why do we believe that Christ commended his love for us? That why do we want to get sin as Christ died for us? John 3 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so whoever believes in him shall not perish but have the very last thing. In 1 John 4 7 8, the Bible tells us God is love. That is the very nature of God, loving. You want to enjoy the fullness of God's freedom? Learn the love of God and learn to fall in love with God. Just like the bishop that we have, loving God, loving people, serving God by serving people. But let me be honest with you, my brothers and sisters in the world. The only way we can love people is when we learn to love God. Because we can never accept the force of the people if we don't know how to love God. Because God sees a sinner as a treasure. He sees them as a mistake. God sees the pain as a learning process. We see it as an offense. God sees difficulty in life as an opportunity to be blessed. We see it as a difficulty. We can never achieve the greatest commandment or the greatest commission, which is preach the gospel and baptize and make disciples, unless we fully embrace the greatest commandment, which is love God above all things. When I was going back to the Old Testament. And I was searching, how come Abraham fell in love with the Lord? How come Moses fell in love with the Lord? How come Elijah fell in love with the Lord? How come David fell in love with the Lord? How come Habakkuk fell in love with the Lord? How come Daniel fell in love with the Lord? How come Malachi fell in love with the Lord? There is only one answer. You know what? They experienced the love of God. All of us have experienced the love of God. We can for the love of God. We can know Him as God. Spend time with Him. Spend time with the Word. Know Him as God. Last thought before I close. I can only truly enjoy freedom. Now I want you to encircle this. I can only and truly enjoy freedom if I know God in my life. And then whatever happens, neither challenges nor distress, I can be free because I know God. The first spiritual question that we need to learn today is freedom. There is freedom in God. Amen? There's freedom in God. Without God, even if you have the, even if you're the most wealthiest person in the world, you're not going to enjoy freedom. Even if you're the most positive speaker in the world, there is no freedom. Even if you're the best talented, the best intelligent person in the world, there is no freedom. Freedom only comes from God. Let us all stand.